As first responders, on any given day, we may be dealing with chemicals. And during an event involving these potential hazardous materials, it's imperative that we understand exactly what we're dealing with. I'm Grant Coffey, and this is FLIR Prime. You know, something my dad said when I was a boy, he said, know your trade, son. And in my 40 plus years as a first responder and contractor, basic chemistry knowledge in our industry is relatively poor. And so today we're gonna to discuss some topics that will assist in training your team. Make sure you get a free download with more information at the end of this episode at flare.com slash prime. There are millions of chemicals in existence and according to the EPA, there are roughly 2,000 new chemicals identified each and every year. I know there's no way to know all of these individual products. However, part of knowing our trade is to focus on general principles and understanding these principles that apply across the board for all these chemicals and understanding them well. So let's first look at the DOT guidebook. Guidelines in this book are based on family chemical characteristics. It's a truly great resource. And another great tool is the SDS system. What does that mean? SDS is short for safety data sheet. The SDS is a standard sheet, but it's specific to the exact product you're dealing with. Here's the bottom line. Each SDS sheet has 16 required sections, and each of those sections are based on general scientific principles that your personnel need to be up to speed with as part of that emergency response toolbox. I want to briefly touch on a few of those general points from the SDS, and then focus on the sections that describe physical and chemical properties. In order to deal with a chemical, we need to know what it is. That's the importance of the SDS system. If we know the identity of the chemical, We'll know its behavior, and knowing its behavior, we can plan for a safe response. When needed, a bill of lading, DOT guidebook, or SDS sheet will give you vital information, but when in doubt, the SDS gives you emergency contacts for experts that will be knowledgeable about this specific product. My advice is to give your team some basic chemistry education. I think it'll give them the confidence that comes with knowledge. First, teach your people at least the basics of how chemicals are named. There are a couple basic formats for this. Chemical name, for simpler compounds, this gives a basic idea of the element or group components in the product. There's also chemical formula. Chemical formula lists the exact elements in each molecule of the product and the trade or common name. A company name or one commonly used by the public or vendors like aspirin. Next, educate them about the general classes or families of hazardous chemicals. Your DOT guidebook will list these but here are a few general terms that all facility and response personnel should understand. First, the danger of oxidizers and typical ways to identify them, like hypo and per, HYPO and PER prefixes, and ATE, ITE, eight and IT suffixes, beginnings and endings of a chemical that can tell you there may be oxidizers present in the compound. Why these yellow label oxidizing chemicals aren't compatible with red label fuel chemicals. The nature of corrosives and how that affects dilution as a solution for pollution. We talked about that in a previous episode. The unique nature of the radiation class while realizing that all radioactive elements or compounds are chemicals first. And the caution needed for special placards like the dangerous placard. The point here is that you may have many or nearly all of the classes present in a shipping container or truck with this placard on it. The 704 system is a good help, but it can help you with general hazard situational awareness. But remember, the 704 won't tell you what chemicals are in the building, what amount is in the building, or where they are in the building. And some of these buildings are huge. Make it a point to train your teams about these basic terms that are critical for understanding the behavior of a chemical in question. First is chemical state. And you know what a key here is that the gas state will impact you first. Two, specific gravity. Knowing whether a liquid will sink or float can give you hints to its hazardous makeup, but also how to use water as your ally, not your enemy, especially if it floats. Acids, caustics, and pH. Basically the strength of a caustic. Even one number on either side of neutral, seven, can have huge consequences. This is relatively easy to determine in the field. 
flashpoint, and flammable range. A broad rule here is that most common hydrocarbon fuel gases like gasoline have narrow ranges, while the fire gases have wide ones. Oxidizers. Teach them about the basic family of oxidizing elements and that tool for determining their presence in a given product. Eight, ite, hypo, and per are clues to the chemical name and can give you a valuable clue as to whether it's an oxidizer or not. Solubility and polar. Knowing whether a liquid will mix with water can help you determine strategies with extinguishment, environmental, and medical. Remember, all chemicals are hazardous depending on many factors like form, concentration, or if mixed with other chemicals that are incompatible. You know what? Knowledge is power. The power to keep you alive. And a good plan is to ensure that your personnel have a basic understanding of simple chemistry and physics. They'll be better served, better educated, and better first responders. That's what we're about at Flair Primed. Be sure to get that download. Just go to flair.com slash primed. Thanks for watching another episode of Flair Primed.